Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, just waiting for a few uh, stragglers to come from uh, uh, the sausage rolls and hot pies. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is John Haynes. I'm uh, Deputy Chief in charge of um, Service Delivery Strategy, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. And I'm doing a, a bit of a tag team today uh, uh, with uh, Tammy Garrett, um, who's the uh, Manager of Community Safety, uh, North East Region, based at uh, Lilydale. So uh, uh, she's going to uh, cough and yell when I go over time, so I stop. Um, so um, for the next um, um, half an hour or so, uh, we just want to um, uh, talk to you about uh, service delivery strategy, uh, the future, and also um, uh, where we're heading and what it means to you uh, at a local level. So um, my, my day job, um, I look after service delivery strategy and it's a, and it's a role where uh, the chief uh, formed a new team three years ago about thinking about the future. Where are we going to be in five years' time, 10 years' time, uh, 15 years' time? Uh, we want to be uh, proactive, not reactive. So uh, um, my job uh, three years ago was to form a new team, and a, a new team that was uh, um, taken from all um, different parts of uh, CFA. So uh, the service delivery strategy, um, which uh, uh, you know, we've just got uh, ticked off by the board in June, and uh, over the next uh, five years you'll see uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the outcomes of that, um, but what we want to do um, uh, is to change uh, the culture and direction of the organisation. And uh, you look at uh, the past culture of CFA um, and me being an operational person, uh, it was pretty much bombs, tanks and aeroplanes. Um, it was very much about response. And uh, uh, the forums such as this um, uh, and the increasing interest in forums uh, such as this uh, shows that we've uh, got a wider view and uh, we want to go in a different direction. So uh, without any further ado, um, we've got a service delivery strategy um, which uh, has got a, a tagline of supporting local people to solve local problems. All right, it's all about you. So uh, it's not about uh, some uh, deputy chief with uh, stuff on their shoulders uh, saying, well, this is the, the decree we're going to go. Um, this is about you. And, uh, and we want to change uh, the culture and where we want to go. And the word strategy is overused a fair bit. And uh, people talk about, uh, you know, we've got a strategy for this, a strategy for that. Um, if you go down the shop and buy a pie, there's probably a strategy behind it. Um, a strategy is really just about getting from here and I'm going to test out uh, uh, Keith's uh, uh, camera skills from this position. So, the strategy is about moving things. If we want to stay the same, uh, we'll just call it a plan. Um, if we want to move somewhere different, we call it a strategy. So this is where we want to get to. So remember, supporting local people to solve local problems, one of the key things part of it. And in that also, um, we've worked very hard um, with what we call the Coalition of the Willing um, to get uh, a network of strategies or an atomic strategy where service delivery is a centrepiece and we've got uh, uh, people strategy, volunteerism, finance and assets. So you can't deliver a service unless you've got all those things connected. You can't deliver a service if you haven't got any dough, I can tell you that. And you can't deliver a service um, if you haven't got some sort of asset base. And of course, we need people, and we're our largest um, our volunteer organisation. If we don't invest in volunteerism, we won't get any, anywhere either. So they're all connected to deliver a service. And if you ask about what um, service we're in, well, a lot of people still say different things. So some people still say bombs, tanks, and aeroplanes. So we're a response. Give us a new fire truck, give us more gear, give us more firefighters, and tick the box, and we've done our service bit. But if you listen to Craig Lapsley this morning, um, service predominantly is what we do um, before, during, and after a fire or emergency. That's what service is in a service delivery organisation. So 
out of that, our four key areas um, in the strategy, uh, empowering and sustaining the front line. Right, we want to make sure, and the front line for us is, is district and above, right, and you'll, uh, you'll get the above bit in a minute when I show another slide. Uh, transforming service delivery to meet local needs. Uh, Bayswater water's different to Beulah. Gisborne's different to Jerome Jerome. If I knows where Jerome Jerome is, if you're in District 17, yeah, 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 well then. Uh, so, um, uh, so we just can't have a blanket way of doing things. And, uh, and Tammy was just having a discussion before uh, about uh, some people come up and saying, oh, yeah, the, uh, this brochure, we don't use it like that. We use it like this for our community. That's fine, because we're actually uh, doing something that meets your local needs, but still getting the job done. Uh, working with communities, you know, not force feeding them, not doing anything else, um, working with communities. And I know you, especially in this room, are, are excellent at doing that. And uh, the last one is about strengthening relationships through collaboration. So, um, in the, the world we live now, um, with uh, emergency management, Victoria and the sector, and uh, all the agencies that, you know, not only emergency services, but the agencies that Craig talked about this morning, um, unless we have really strong relationships with everybody, and collaborate, uh, we'll keep on doing the same old, same old. So we've got to be strong in that, we've got to uh, invest in our relationships and uh, we'll reap the benefits. So uh, a couple of years ago, um, we did a, a discussion paper called uh, Service Delivery uh, Strategy 2025. And it was trying to get people's juices in their minds going to say, what's the world gonna look like in 2025? And some of the drivers of that um, and we call uh, uh, severe weather, right? Severe weather caused by climate change or not. You know, if you cut the room in half, 50-50 would say yes or no climate change. But whatever it is, um, we've noticed um, really hot you know, heat waves, we've noticed floods, we've noticed uh, uh, you know, cold, and we've noticed uh, extreme um, uh, uh, storm damage. So whatever it is, um, we've got to live with uh, severe weather. Uh, there's not a bottomless pit of dough. Um, so what we do with our dough, we've actually got to make it worthwhile and uh, invest in the right things that make a difference. Uh, we've got a, um, a, an approach across the sector now. So everybody um, has to work together um, and we work as one. And no matter what we do, um, there's always going to be um, community demands that just keep outrunning what we expect. And I just think pre-2009, um, and we had a, the Alpine fires and we had a lot of, uh, you know, the community briefings and, uh, and things were going well. You know, we thought, you know, we're going really well. Um, we've got this uh, community engagement stuff nailed and uh, we're sorted. And we did. And we did for, um, you know, slow moving fires that, you know, you know in two days time it's going to uh, come at the back of Bright or Mansfield. Um, but when, uh, you know, the roaring fire of 2009, um, we just weren't quick enough uh, at that time uh, to do the community engagement, community warnings and information. So every time we think we've got somewhere, we get tested again. So um, part of the strategy is about saying, well, what do we need to think about? What's our worst case scenario? How do we actually get there? Uh, and the other driver of change, we just want to do better. Um, as an organisation, uh, CFA, um, I know everyone in the room just wants to improve and do, do things better. And that's an internal driver um, that always uh, uh, drives us. So um, this is a little bit of a, uh, a structure-wise, and um, it's a bit like the Da Vinci Code, if you think about it. Uh, but we've got uh, our mission is protecting lives and property. All, right. All signed up to that, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, and we've got four long-term outcomes, and I'll discuss them in a tick, um, signed up by the board. Uh, we've got the strategy in the middle, the network of strategies, the atomic strategy, with service delivery as a, as a cornerstone. And then um, we've got to make sure you know, we've got uh, all the ducks lined up. So we have annual plans, we've been working on annual plans at the uh, moment with regions and districts, um, and then we're going to get down to brigade plan level. Um, so in a structure-wise, what we want to do is to have um, uh, the one mission, one goal. And we use uh, you know, the NASA model. 
and uh, uh, we're, we're talking to uh, uh, Craig Lutz the other day, the commissioner, and we're saying, you know, it's just like uh, the NASA model of the mission to get a uh, man on the moon in the 60s. And, uh, and he said, oh, it never happened. It only happened in a studio, you yeah. know. Non-believer, but, but out of that, uh, um, what we want to do is everyone's role in CFA um, is about uh, service delivery and making sure we get to the mission of protecting lives and property. So the long-term outcomes, why do we do things? Um, and the board has uh, signed off uh, these to be our targets down the track. If we've got nowhere to go, um, how do you know when we're gonna get there? So what we're trying to do uh, is to reduce incidents and impact of fire emergencies on the community, reduce the impact of non-fires, so we don't you know, only do fires, we do hazmat, we do a whole lot of other um, uh, services, if you like, the, uh, with the community. Um, we highly entrusted and respected fire and emergency service. Yeah, we just have to keep working on that one. And increase community resilience to fire and non-fires. So it's increased community resilience, it doesn't mean we own it. Um, and uh, the communities own the resilience, we just got to help them. And, uh, and I know you do that very well. Um, and this is the other part of the Da Vinci Code. There's one triangle, this is the second triangle. Um, this is our, um, our service delivery model. And you hear uh, Ewan Ferguson uh, talk about uh, the inverted triangle. And what it means is that uh, brigades in the community are at the top. And the rest of the organisation supports brigades and community to uh, solve your local problems uh, and support you to do that. So with that as well, the community got a shared responsibility. So we can't do it all by ourselves and you know that as well. So unless the community um, are engaged or connected or whatever word that we want to use in the future, um, we can't do that on our own. And it's proven we can't do that on our own. So we need the community uh, working with us and we need to work with the community. So um, uh, that is our service delivery model and uh, again in some parts uh, of the organisation that's a cultural change. But you can see where we're trying to get to and it's, uh, this is a five year strategy, it's not something where we could uh, you know, just cross the arms and blink uh, like I dream of journey it happens now, it's something we've got to work towards and, uh, and we'll get there. Okay, I'll hand over to Tammy and we'll have questions later, I think. How to go for time, Tammy? So, I thought I'd throw all the words up that you've probably heard about 20 times already and you'll probably hear about another 50 to 100 times before the end of the conversation uh, and before the end of the weekend. So, we've just heard that we've got the strategy. Uh, we don't have a plan, we have a strategy and we're gonna see this happen. And how we make this happen is through being adaptable and using some of the tools that we already have. Now, what we've found in community safety or community education, we've given you a whole bunch of programs, but they've been locked in little containers. And if you've ever tried to open up a Play-Doh container for the first time, you need a science degree. So, what we're actually meaning with this and all these key terms is opening up the container and let's be flexible. Let's even be really scary and get a couple of them. And for any controlling person out there, the hardest thing you can ever do with Play-Doh is blend them. How frustrating. As a mother, I know, God, don't, don't mix the colours. But let's get some of our ComEd programs. Let's blend them and mix them. And if it doesn't come out quite right, you know what? We've got a couple of others. There's plenty of other containers, different colours. So why don't we start to use some of our different programs, blend them, adapt them, make them localised for your local problems, your local communities. We're already seeing that in what you've heard so far, what you've seen on the bragging boards as you walked <coughs> along, as you're talking to each other. You're hearing that people have got little different ways and approaches to some of our set concrete type programs, we're adapting them. And as districts and regions, we're now supporting you to adapt them and make them localised. Some of the things that uh, we can just throw up very quickly, 
uh, newsletters, whether it's doing a Burns Table demonstration, uh, CFA Open Day is coming up again November this year, um, Red Bucket Program was another one. It's using what your community are doing and how you can, your knowledge, you know how to tap into your community. Uh, Facebook, social media, my CFA is the new launched program, so Paul Harris is around and promoting that over the weekend. Try to encourage people to log on and join up membership into my CFA, and that way they can get localised information emailed out to them on a fortnightly basis. Uh, other things that we have, a um, bit of self-promotion for my reporting tool or the app. If we can start to get other brigades reporting what they're doing and advertising what they're doing, you're going to have a bit more of an awareness of what's going on around you or different activities and you might be able to ring up a neighbouring brigade or one over the other side of the state and say, hey, I saw you were doing this event on this day, how did it go? There's no harm in picking up the phone or even going along and visiting and seeing it for yourself if you're travelling up that way on a quick weekender. Um, multicultural event was one that we ran out in District 13. We had a bit, bit of a problem with some Burmese fishermen. So we got all the local networks. We've heard that term already today. Got the local, um, uh, we had DSE at the time, so DELP. Uh, we got Victoria Police, we had the local council, and we all put on a big massive day for the uh, Burmese community where each of us got together and did a, uh, each gave our own reason and cause for what we had as an issue and did a bit of an education session right there and then. Uh, we've also got the new shelter options, so community fire refuges are starting to be increasingly uh, thought of and being implemented. Also personal shelters with bunkers, a lot, a lot more conversation is happening now with bunkers and how do you have those conversations. Uh, horse education or pets, this was one that we came up with, or not we didn't, uh, we saw it just recently where someone didn't know how to do um, or how to react on a day so she spray painted her horse with contact details. So then we saw a bit of a need for what do we need, to, what education do you need to give to horse owners and was that an appropriate method on the day. So from all of this, with this service delivery strategy, it's showing that we can work, make it flexible, blend, it might be a bit yucky to start off with, but it might turn out an awesome purple colour in the end, or you add a little bit more blue or a little bit of a different colour. So there's no harm in being flexible and adaptable, and let's make local problems and work them out with local solutions. Thank you. <laughs> questions. There's a couple of mics running around, so if anyone has questions for myself or John. Hi. One at the front. Cool. Well, shout. Shout. So, the time you plan, which is the overall sort of operator plan, we worked in that schedule on a lot of places. <laughs> well, there's some things that you know we can start that sort of won't bear fruit for about two or three years. Um, as long as we focus on this, the five-year overall plan that's sort of coming from top down, are we conforming to the um, to the overall sort of structure of the thing? Yeah, it's um, because. Uh, uh, there's no one bland CFA. Um, there's going to be a need for moving different things at different times. If we can get where we want to be in five years' time, and if you start something before someone starts at three years' time, it's not going to really matter. Um, we want to get um, the same place together in, in five years' time. Um, so the whole idea of, of um, having um, you know, the local focus, if you like, is to give you that ability uh, to mush up the play-doh and say, well, I need to use uh, the red one this year and they're going to put a little bit of green with it uh, next year and they're going to get this different outcome. Because, um, uh, look, I've, I've, my, my history in CFA, I've been 30 years and 22 years in reasonable Victoria, the last eight uh, in the head chair. Um, and uh, it's really got to be the local people who understand their local community um, who drive this 
um, not me um, sitting in the head shed saying this is what you're going to do first, this is what you're going to do third. So um, the, answer, the short answer is yes. John, um, a question about your two triangles. <clears throat> your first triangle was the uh, strategy direction, I think it was. Yep. And uh, the sh your strategy is in the middle, and then is your annual plan. You said your annual plan with districts and then brigades. But your other triangle is up the other way and says exactly the opposite, where the state, the district, the brigade supports the community. So why, why are we having our annual planning meeting with districts prior to working out where brigades are at? Because then the brigade is, is and the community is directed by what the district wants to do. Uh, good question, 100%. Um, this, this first year, um, because um, you know, strategy is new and in some circumstances at district level planning is new, <coughs> Um, what we're going to do is get the uh, district uh, in the headspace of planning, uh, year one. Um, we've already, uh, uh, the next thing we're going to do is start to do uh, brigade planning to force other way, as exactly as you say. So what we have to do is get some enablers done first um, to get people in the space. Um, then the next thing is about brigade planning driving um, CFA's uh, direction. So if we're really, I understand if, you, if we're true to our word and say the inverted triangle, brigades and locals have to drive where we, the direction we want to get to, and that'll, that'll probably take us 12 months to get that up and going properly. Um, Is that working? <laughs> yeah. Um, you'd be bound to find a situation where brigades and uh, communities are very keen to do something. We run smack into district, state, whoever, saying, nah, no budget. The, we're, um, I don't know the answer to that, but... Uh, the, the answer's not going to be uh, an overnight answer, but um, we, look, we're... we're uh, almost a half a billion dollar organisation, right? Half a billion dollars is our, is our annual budget. Um, do, do we spend our annual budget on things that really make difference to the community in total? Um, probably not. So what we're trying to do with this, and it might take us five, it might take us ten years to get this right, um, but is to um, um, uh, We've been working very hard with uh, districts, regions uh, and the state over the last six to 12 months and to say, look, this is coming, this is what it means. Um, a lot of our, our systems and processes um, have changed to um, enable this to happen, um, but it's going to take a little bit of time because we're also um, uh, uh, challenging culture. Right? And that's our biggest thing. Um, this is a cultural change and this is what I'm saying uh, it's going to, if we want to get from there to there, it's going to take time, it's going to take patience, it's going to take reinforcement. But this is the direction that the board signed off. This is where we want to go. Um, so that's the authorising environment. That lets us play in that space. Um, from, from our job is to say, okay, are we realistic about um, what do we need to do to help you to solve local problems? Have we got the, the budget allocation right? If we stop doing something else and invest it in this, we'll make a better outcome. And, and that's the four long-term outcomes is about, unless we do things differently, we'll just do the same. Thank you for that. I, I guess the issue in my head is, is where's the mechanism for that input to get back to you guys? Yeah, the... Um, Without being bottlenecked with the two triangles intersect. Yeah, no, yeah, true. We're... Um, uh, We've been um, going around uh, challenging uh, uh, district planning committees, uh, for starters, and to say, is there a better way we can do uh, district planning committees where we get information from brigades? And uh, some at um, uh, Seymour and Shepparton and I know are already starting to cut, paste, modify um, to have a different outlook. Um, so uh, we're encouraging that sort of discussion and uh, freeing up of some of bureaucracy, if you like, 
um, and changing the focus of um, how brigades relate back to the district and how we um, get things flowing. Thank you for that. Sorry, I'm listening to this uh, stuff and um, at the end of the day, we need the tools to do our work, to our, our community work. And if you don't give it to us regarding budget, regarding budget strategies, uh, give us the tools and we'll do the work for you. Simple as that. Uh, when, yeah. I, when, I, when I hear um, you talk about budget strategies and uh, oh, it, it, it does my head in, you know, you give us the tools, we'll do it. Uh, yes, and I, I agree with that. Um, but for us, it, the, the issue for us is that um, um, we, we need to uh, be realistic about what our best bang for our budgets. Right. And I said, we've got almost half a million dollars um, spent on what that makes a difference. So if, if we things, make thing, things that make a difference that actually protect lives and property, and you've gone and heard from some, uh, a few sessions today about you know, how many uh, people die in residential um, uh, fires. Uh, we don't even talk about, and we're starting to talk about how many people uh, are injured in fires. Um, and if we're really serious about protecting lives and property, uh, then we need to invest in programs and local solutions that make that difference. Uh, and part of that uh, is right, is the, the tools and programs and mechanisms to do that. So, yeah, I, I agree. What do you say to, um, regarding we're going to have no variable message boards throughout the Danny Dongs to get the messages across for um, public meetings, community meetings, uh, open days and that sort of thing. Because I was told there's no budget for it. That's one of the best tools that we can have uh, to get the message out to our communities that these meetings are going ahead within our area or whatever. And maybe Tammy can answer this, you know, that's what I've been told. You can, you tell me. Um, it's been, at the moment where, yeah, budget's a nasty word, uh, it's looking at how do we, across the region now, because we've all merged into the regions, how do we, with our regional budget, make it fair and equitable for everybody. Um, not saying that there's no budget, we just have to look at where we're going to allocate and, and put some of our money into um, areas that maybe haven't had a community engagement or any, any program for some period of time. Um, you, we just have to look at what we have got and where we're allocating resources equitably. Um, and look, variable message boards, we may not have money from our direct budget, but there's nothing to say that in the background we're not looking at other grants, uh, we're not looking at our networks, we're looking at councils at the moment saying, hey, well, how about you start to support us? So we might not have an immediate budget, but bear in mind that the district and the, the regional team are very much looking into other areas. And, and the supplementary, um, so we can get the microphone again. The, uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, the Chief Officer now, uh, as part of our arrangements um, across the state, um, is responsible for the whole service delivery budget right across the organisation. Right? Um, so uh, if there's pressures uh, in uh, the North East budget and uh, through the Assistant Chief Officers uh, says, oh, look, we need to uh, put some more cash into uh, one part or another, the Chief can move dollars around. Right. So there are mechanisms um, that we haven't really tested and tried out yet, um, but uh, there are enablers already there to make it happen. for what you'd like to ask. But I think these guys did a wonderful job. We've just got a few minutes, have we, Jack, until the others come down? Uh, we do. On their way over. Everybody from the SES is going to join us. So if you maybe could squeeze...